welcome back to another live stream. Hope you guys are doing well. So uh, in today's episode, uh, we're going to talk all about the Bitcoin ETF news uh, that has some of it has been released, but there's also quite a few pending decisions coming this week. So we're going to cover is the Bitcoin pump actually warranted? Why is everyone excited about this Bitcoin spot ETF fake news? Uh, we'll also cover exactly what happened with the fake news releases this week, how people are misinterpreting them, and why I think this is likely a bull trap in the short term. Uh, also, upcoming this week, we're likely to just, uh, we are likely to see another round of ETF uh, decisions, which are likely going to be delays. So I'll show you uh, the exact data of why I think this is the case. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. My name is Dennis, and this is the Virtual Bacon channel. Uh, I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 companies. And on this channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Okay, let's get straight into today's episode. And let's start off with yesterday's major news, and that was from Cointelegraph. So Cointelegraph published a fake Bitcoin spot ETF approval news yesterday morning. They stated that BlackRock's uh, ETF application had been approved. So BlackRock spot ETF approved reportedly, but later on, uh, they actually went on to interview uh, Larry Fink from BlackRock and they have actually confirmed that, okay, this was a rumor. They wasn't even aware of this news coming up. So, uh, as people can expect, since this news caught on, Bitcoin price had a major rally as people jumped in very quickly. But right away, because the news was dispelled, uh, price came crashing down. So it printed a really ugly wick candle like this on the five minute chart. And on the one hour, you can't even see it. And Cointelegraph went ahead to apologize about this after. Uh, and they made a whole clarification on exactly what happened on sharing this false Bitcoin ETF news. So essentially, the timeline is that uh, in the morning, Cointelegraph has this war room where all of their analysts come in uh, trying to get the best news out of uh, all of the uh, news sites in the world, uh, financial news sites, and Bloomberg, Bloomberg Terminal, for example. Uh, they were actively watching all the ETF news on there. And somehow, uh, one of the uh, accounts in this group said that BlackRock's ETF was approved, and they kept, you know, trying to fact check it, et cetera, et cetera. But because they were trying to uh, be the first one to break this potential news, someone just went ahead and tweeted about it on the official Coin Telegraph Twitter, and they jumped the gun too fast. And people very started uh, quickly started just quoting them as the source, even though. Uh, people didn't know exactly where the original source was. And later on, it was uh, shown that this was fake news. And we still don't know who this exact person is that spread this initial rumor. Uh, but most likely, this person should be fired. And so that led to eventually them retracting this statement. And they apologize for the tweet. Now, you can say, OK, I, I think there are two potential uh, real reasons behind this. Number one, it could really just be that, okay, uh, someone came into the newsroom and uh, wanted to make a name for themselves and just, you know, quoted the fake news. Uh, the other case could be that this is somehow planned manipulation. And I would not be surprised if this was the case uh, to specifically cause a short squeeze in the Bitcoin markets and trap a lot of breakout traders uh, to get in on those early longs right above 30K. And I think regardless of whether this was planned or not, the wick candle above 30K should not be trusted. And that's a big basis of how I'm going to be analyzing the price charts in today's episode. Okay, now after this news, uh, the consensus around Twitter and around the sentiment is that this was very bullish because everyone is saying, imagine when the ETF actually does get approved. Uh, you know, this is just a test of what the real pump could be. This is super bullish. You should be getting in now, uh, now that we have had this wick. But 
I like to think that、um, this is just causing unnecessary FOMO because if you really think about it, do we not know that the Bitcoin spot ETF was going to pump the price? Of course, people already knew that. And、uh, has anything actually fundamentally changed from a fake news? Well, no, we don't have any extra proof now that this ETF news is going to come any time earlier or.、Uh, Anything bullish at all? Any anything factual? This is this does not make any anything different. So I really I I want to take a step back and consider, you know, most of this bullish sentiment coming from this fake news. I think it's just people、uh, really trying to slap anything bullish on top of this、uh, to make it work, to make a, an argument to be bullish on Bitcoin, which is good. You know, long term, even medium to long term, I think Bitcoin is really set for bullish trajectory in. Uh, the next Bitcoin having in the next cycle, etc. But immediate short term, if you're really treating this news as like a bullish catalyst, I think that's、uh, that's a little bit far stretched. It's mostly just FOMO. Okay, speaking of FOMO and misinterpretation,、uh, earlier this week, another piece of news came out that I think is worth mentioning and worth clarifying, which was the、uh, SEC's. Appeal decision in their grayscale lawsuit case. So,、uh, four days ago,、uh, the SEC versus grayscale lawsuit had their final deadline, and this、uh, ended in the SEC not appealing the court's decisions,、uh, which means, well, it's somewhat bullish for Bitcoin and for Bitcoin ETF. But let's get into the specifics because.、Uh, First of all, a lot of people were interpreting this decision as Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF will just get approved right away,、uh, and which I mean that's not the case because we still have not seen the approval. And secondly, people are saying now that、uh, because the SEC didn't approve Grayscale's court decision, now、uh, the next step is just a matter of time before they have to approve this this ETF, which is also this is not true. So. Uh, if you really read into what this ETF、uh, lawsuit was, so initially the、uh, the lawsuit's basis was that、uh, the SEC arbitrarily denied Grayscale's app- ETF application because、uh, it was trying to co- convert a futures ETF to a spot ETF, but they never really explained why the futures ETF and the spot ETF were very different. So Grayscale said, "Okay, you cannot." Reject us on this basis. So this is not good enough reason, and you need to reconsider your、uh, your decision and at least review our application, similar to the other tradfi giants from BlackRock, from Invesco, etc. This is what the lawsuit entailed,、uh, and now because the SEC didn't、uh, appeal to the court's decision, which means okay, the SEC recognized that. We're not going to reject Grayscale's ETF application just because they wanted to do this conversion. Instead, we will review them fair and square. But this is all it is. So, the next thing that we can expect is for、uh, the courts to instruct the SEC to revisit Grayscale's application. They don't have to tell SEC tell the SEC that you have to appeal. They just have to re-review it again. And、um, so here you can read. It's unclear how the SEC will proceed in its next round with Grayscale's application. The agency still has the authority to deny it for other reasons besides the one court shot down. Though Grayscale could challenge those again in court. So this is the true meaning of this、uh, SEC non-appeal case in the Grayscale lawsuit. Uh, it does not mean the grayscale ETF is for sure going to come. The chances are a little bit higher than before, but it doesn't change. It, it doesn't make it a guarantee, and it doesn't change the actual timeline for when the review comes out. So, this is another piece of news that、uh, was very bullish. People were kind of misinterpreting it as, as overly bullish, but I think it's still worth mentioning. So, all in all, this week.、Uh, These two pieces of news, with Coin Telegraph's fake news, which literally nothing has happened, and this、uh, grayscale SEC、uh, lawsuit news, 
these two pieces of news combined is getting people riled up again and people are getting very excited and they think oh the etf is going to come out any minute now because we're hearing about it a lot more but uh, once you read into the specifics of these you start to realize that this is kind of just fomo and kind of just uh people wanting the etf approval to happen okay uh now something a little bit more interesting to note so right after yesterday's uh rumor coming from blackrock well, so Larry Fink went on tv to do an interview well, I, actually from yesterday's uh rumor caused spike you can't talk about so here's what he said of anything so I he said that the example of the pent-up interest uh, in crypto play it and i and through. we are hearing from clients around the world about the need for crypto i mean when you think about I think some of this rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the, you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight to quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold, or crypto. Well, okay, so basically Larry Fink also confirms that this news with uh with coin telegraph is nothing but a rumor and the excitement coming from the bitcoin markets coming from the rally is not because there is an impending etf approval it's not because the etf is already approved instead it's about the flight to quality it's about the uh turmoil in the world and the long-term effects that bitcoin can have on this and the fact that bitcoin is a safe haven asset for example it's the next digital gold that blackrock is trying to push now people are saying oh larry fink is bullish on bitcoin and he's telling other people to to buy bitcoin again which is true however i think the real alpha that he's giving us here is that he he is saying the etf app, uh, approval is not ready it is not it did not come out yesterday and it is likely not going to come out today, for example. Imagine if today um, he went on TV again to do an interview and says, oh, the ETF is approved. Even though yesterday I just came on here and said that uh, this was the rumor and you know the, the Bitcoin spike was not caused by ETF approval. It was just a rumor. So imagine if he has to go on TV to say that again. So the fact that he did this interview yesterday, I think it's really telling on what the potential dates, uh, approvals, and the potential delays that we will see the ETF decisions coming this week. So think about that. Think about that for a second and why he did this interview yesterday. And adding on top of this, I want to sh just show you guys really quick on the next wave of ETF decisions. When are they coming exactly? So here we have, I'm just going to move myself to the left here here are the real dates uh, coming up so you see the second wave of deadlines which is right here these decisions are coming right this week so you see october 17 16 17 17 17 19 and that's from uh arc 20 uh, arc is not this week but that's from iShares bitcoin trust which is blackrock bitwise vetneck Wisdom Tree, Invesco, Fidelity, Valkyrie. So all the ones that matter, there is a new round of ETF decisions that's coming, well, supposedly yesterday, but that one hasn't been uh, announced yet. But today, essentially, seven of them will be announced to be re uh, rejected, approved, or delayed today in this second wave of deadlines. This is when the SEC has to make a comment again. Now, what do you think is going to happen to these decisions coming later today, maybe tomorrow. I think they are most likely going to be delayed yet again. And I think that's going to hurt the market dramatically, at least for the short term, because people are overly excited now. So why is this the case? Uh, well, first of all, consider that uh, the SEC has already set their final deadlines for Bitcoin's spot ETF approval to early 2024. And I have covered this before in a full in-depth video uh, talk about why the Bitcoin ETF likely won't come out sometime this year, because the historical precedent is that 
uh, the SEC tends to take the full 240 day period review period before they make any decision uh, on and uh, on a Bitcoin ETF application. So uh, this means that the uh, eventual decisions we'll get will likely be around the final deadlines in March of next year. So this is number one. Number two is that, well, out of this list, I have also covered this before, but out of this list, BlackRock is really the only one that matters because BlackRock number is the number one asset manager in the world, has the best track record for an ETF approval, uh, 375 or so out of 376, only one rejection ever. And BlackRock is the only firm on this application list that has filed for the first time. And if you look at all the other guys, well, they have all been rejected before and they only refiled their Bitcoin ETFs after BlackRock came in. So really BlackRock is the deciding factor here. If BlackRock's ETF doesn't get approved, I highly doubt other ETFs will be approved before them. So keep this in mind that BlackRock will likely be the first approval and it, it will likely be approved, but they will be first. And combine this with the news yesterday that after the fake news came out, Larry Fink already went on TV and said that this was just a rumor and the price uh, spike was not caused by this rumor, but instead it's by the long-term qualities. And <laughs> thinking about the decision, a potential decision coming today, how silly that would look if if the ETF actually gets approved today and Larry Fink went, uh, has to go on TV again and do this interview all over again. I think chances are we are going to see another round of delays coming from the ETF deadlines this week with all things combined. Think about if that makes sense to you, right? At least this, this is my thought process. So assuming that the ETF delays are coming this week, they just haven't been announced yet, what's going to happen to the markets? Well, everyone's overly excited about the Bitcoin ETF now. They think the Grayscale uh, ETF conversion is anytime now. And they think the Cointelegraph news is a precursor to the uh, ETF approval. So if today or tomorrow they get a slap on the wrist and say, okay, we have a seven of the applications being delayed yet again, that's going to cause the market to have a, a short-term crash. I, I think I think so. Now, it's not going to be anything major because we have already seen delay and delay. Uh, as long as it's not going to it's not a rejection. I think it will be fine. But certainly, I think the short-term crazy rally that we had uh, since yesterday, I think that's likely going to turn out as a bull trap. So that's the basis of today's um, video. That's the fundamental analysis part of today's video. Okay, now let's get into some of the data of what happened on yesterday's price run-up. Uh, so the first major thing to watch out for is that while well, there's a lot of longs trapped on this big wick that we had yesterday when Bitcoin's price wicked all the way up to $30,700. And on top of this, you see that there has been a huge liquidation on the shorts, meaning that this huge wick up was actually a huge short squeeze. So you see, uh, the aggregated open interest, which is how much uh, total open interest is in the uh, long and short positions in the futures markets, well, that got wiped out uh, from 220,000 Bitcoin to 191,000 Bitcoin. So about 31,000 Bitcoin worth of uh, futures contracts were liquidated. And you see on this actual liquidations, a lot of that were buying, which means a lot of shorts were liquidated. So this meant that a lot of shorts were liquidated on this uh, on this short squeeze. A lot of people went in and started buying, but clearly they got trapped uh, on this wick candle here because anyone that has bought above $28,500 or so, well, they are now trapped in their position. So that's the first thing that's significant. About $100 million worth of shorts liquidated, uh, caused by a lot of long buying, but they are now trapped above 28500 or so. 
And then second thing to consider from this is that, well, what's going to happen next to these trap buyers? So dating back to the uh, first thing we mentioned, whether this uh, move was a manipulation or not. So if it is a manipulation, if this candle was caused by some market makers telling Cointelegraph to create this fake news, well, that means that, well, market makers needed liquidity. They wanted people to uh, go into these long positions very early uh, and become trapped up here in order for the market makers to fill their short positions. This, is the, this would be the case if this news was manipulation. Uh, because this, this is essentially what market makers do. They use the news to manipulate the news so that they can get the best entries that otherwise would not come. And in this case, because this wick is on the upside, obviously their entries would have been short. So if it were manipulation, the chances are next move is likely going to be down because they have filled their shorts above 28, 29,000. Now, on the other hand, uh, if you believe Cointelegraph's clarification of how this news played out, and if you think that this is just a real mi mishap, right? This is was a mis uh, honest mistake. Then in that case, well, a lot of longs are trapped above 29K. We know that now. And we know the market makers will want to take advantage of this. So do you think the market makers will now release some sort of positive news and bring the price back up to save these people's positions? Do you think if you bought into this news uh, of this fake news and you bought Bitcoin at 30K, do you think BlackRock is going to come in and now you know release some positive news so that your position can become over water again so that you can exit your position at break even? I think that's highly unlikely. Uh, I think now that we have this large uh, amount of longs trapped above 29K, chances are we are going to try to liquidate these guys on the other side. Even if there were some bullish news planned by the market makers, I think chances are they're going to try to delay that now and bring price down again to pressure these guys and to add that as fuel before the final, before the next wave up comes. So that's what I'm seeing on uh, the potential effects of this of this uh, wick that we had yesterday. So TLDR is that every time that we have one of these large wicks that's uh, coming from fake news, that's coming from potential manipulation, if it is manipulation, this wick would not be filled. If it were not manipulation, well, there's a chance that it can be filled, but I don't think this is likely in the current case. Uh, all things considered from the fundamentals of the ETF news uh, have not been changed. Okay. Now, uh, with that in mind, let's quickly look at Bitcoin's price then. So what am I seeing on Bitcoin's price chart going forward? So in the immediate short term, I am actually in a short position, uh, very, very, very short term swing. So can I bring that up here on the parallel channel? Here we go. So what I have been watching on Bitcoin's chart is this parallel channel, essentially. So I have uh, talked about this on our Discord as well. You can, uh, if you have been following our Discord for our VIP signals, I have been actively calling for this uh, short position, this swing down, since the last time we went up to test 28,000. Essentially because, uh, well, Bitcoin is in this sideways swing range. And now that the uh, range highs has been tested, chances are we're going to revisit the range lows. And now, uh, because this, we know that this is a fake breakout coming from this fake news, I added to my short position right around $28,300-ish. Because I think chances are this swing high and this swing high, these were not confirmed breakouts. And this candle here on the daily, 
as long as the next daily candle doesn't close above, let's say 28,300, that's going to look very ugly again, uh, which is going to show essentially a huge wick up, but no close above the range. And that's going to be uh, adding to my case that we're likely to see uh, Bitcoin price to come down into this range again and potentially move towards the range lows. Now, that's uh, the very short term swing trade I'm taking. In terms of long term position, I'm not saying Bitcoin is likely to revisit much lower levels from here. So my bottom line for Bitcoin, if I can bring you guys up to the watch list for me here. So my bottom line for Bitcoin is right around this wick here at uh, 21,500 ish. And this states even on the weekly time frame. So you see on the weekly chart, this huge wick here that we had, this has been my bottom line for ever since like August ish, because this uh, came from the massive bearish news that we had that Binance was under investigation and essentially Binance might be forced to shut down, et cetera, et cetera. And that only caused price to crash to 21,500 ish. So for all intents and purposes, I don't think this level will be broken. And that's why I have had this level uh, drawn on the chart for a pretty long time now. Uh, so all in all, from current level of around 28K to around 21K, I think that's all long-term accumulation within this range. And even from current price down here, that's only about 23% maximum drawdown, which means over the long term, if you are really betting on, you know, one year to three year next Bitcoin cycle, the last little bit of uh, downside accumulation, like 20% or so uh, margin on the very bottom, is that worth chasing? Chances are it's not. So if you're really looking at just long term accumulation, I would say anything below 30K is going to be a buy. It's going to be long term accumulation. Uh, with a stop loss, let's say below 20K. Very simple. That's a very simple long-term accumulation goal. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it mistaken uh, with the short-term trade opportunity. Even though I'm taking a short-term trade on the short side, I think long-term, you know, uh, chances are this is still the time to accumulate. Okay. Uh, and just a little bit on the long-term accumulation targets. So the intersection between this short-term trade and the long-term uh, bull run starting, I think it's very interesting as well because here we have this EMA average line, uh, this red curve line that you see here. So this is the 200 daily exponential moving average, which usually acts as the uh, bull market resistance and bear market, uh, sorry, bear market resistance and bull market support, which means if Bitcoin is in a uptrend consistent bull market, then this level will be tested and potentially wicked below, but it will not close below it. So you see, tested twice be, uh, before. And in a bear market, well, it tends to stay below this average level and not break above it. So this now is very interesting because since the uh, market rally we had in the beginning of the year, we did test this uh, 20, 200 daily EMA level twice, but now we are going into this sideways range where we're kind of testing it as resistance, but also in this reason to break out uh, in October, we did test it as support once. So now it's kind of really a no trade level where we are in a transition period and, and the next wave of uh, whether it is a uptrend or downtrend will highly depend on what happens within this range. So if Bitcoin price comes back down into this range and actually test this level, test this 200 daily EMA and bounces from it convincingly, uh, that's going to look very bullish, even for the long term. And if this bounce happens, then I would readjust my short term trade target and I wouldn't even target 
these range lows anymore. And instead, I would just really focus on accumulating uh, if this bounce happens. Now, on the other hand, if Bitcoin's price comes back down into this range and breaks below this range, uh, below this EMA level again, and starts doing kind of these type of patterns where it's testing this level but uh, closing below it, then chances are we're going to see a little bit longer of sideways consolidation before the next wave of uptrend actually starts. So this is actually very uh, interesting to watch. Assuming that my interpretation of the short-term news is correct and the Bitcoin ETF delays is coming in and we are likely to come back into this range, Bitcoin's price reaction to this 200 daily EMA level is going to be crucial to watch because that will determine whether we will have a few more months of consolidation below this EMA level or if it's going to bounce from it and the uptrend will just continue and this uh, little bit of short-term correction is the last one that we'll see. So which case is likely to play out? I don't really know yet. So let's let's see. Let's see Bitcoin's reaction right around 27K. I think that's going to be very interesting to watch uh, in the even just this week, yeah, this week and next week when the new wave of ETF delays come in. Uh, okay, so that's everything that I have prepared for today uh, on the Bitcoin ETF news, on all the fake news and how what the real interpretations should be on Bitcoin's price charts. And if you found this helpful, please leave a like down below and uh, definitely check out our uh all of our links on virtualbacon.com. So number one thing you should do is follow me on Twitter, virtualbacon0x. And if you want to follow my Bitcoin trades, well, uh, you should definitely join our Discord because this is uh, where I'll be posting essentially every day, every other day about our Bitcoin trades. And uh, we have our copy trading campaign uh, happening right now on Fairdesk. And you can find that uh, with the link in the description or on virtualbacon.com where you can directly copy all my trades 